we all have a goal or a vision for our lives but sometimes with so much negative distractions around us especially in terms of social media and news channels the mind can get distracted especially in times like these when we're also working from home and we're not going to offices the routine gets disturbed and we tend to procrastinate so what do you do in these cases well for the same reason today i am going to be speaking with the emotional intelligence teacher shivam shivam is also the author of two best selling novels how to unleash your true potential and finding the magic in you so without any further ado let's just dive into the conversation so hi shivam hi sambhav how are you very good shivam how are you I'm good as well. Thank you. Okay, so Shivam, uh, so one thing I want to ask you is that uh, there are a lot of negativity is going around us in terms yes. of you know, COVID, the health-related issues. Then also there is a Sushant Singh case which is running out. So there's a lot of negative right. news surrounding us, and mm -hmm. um, all of these distractions. We have our goals. We have something we want to achieve. We have a vision for our lives, and yet. Right. these distractions really you know stop us from really focusing on their goals and you know mm -hmm. moving towards it so mm -hmm. in such, in such in such distractions distracted world how do you really yes. stick towards your goals okay uh, the first thing the first and the most important thing towards working on any long term goal would be to i think divide that goal into short term goals first of all that would be the most important part because very often we have some long term goals some really big goals for ourselves that i want to be here in the next 5 years but that's something that is quite large quite broad and you will have to actually break it down to smaller goals to be able to see that you are actually moving forward because if you are working on just a single long term goal you would have just one end point in mind and until and unless you reach there you wouldn't be able to know that i have moved forward in life but if you start working on small goals you will be able to see that okay i am finally progressing i am finally moving forward so that would always give the motivation to constantly keep working towards that particular part so i think the first part would be to actually break down your goals into smaller smaller segments mm -hmm. and then keep rewarding yourself keep complimenting yourself on achieving that particular goal and uh, small term goals for that particular matter mm -hmm. the second thing i believe would be to understand your values and understand your vision because if you have some vision for life and if you have some values for life you'd be able to find and work on those things in a much much better manner now the, that value that value system is different for different people for example for me the value could be helping people and for another person the value could be let's say earning a lot of money and there's nothing wrong with that i'm just saying that let's say the value system for me is uh, uh, helping people as for other person is earning a lot of money so for me all my goals and all my vision would be driven by that values by those set of values so the thing that i want to achieve in life my value would obviously coincide with that for another person that that would be the same so it's important first to be able to find out our values and relate that value to our goals because very often what we generally do is we try to copy others we try to feel that okay that person is being so successful in life we must try to copy whatever they are doing but still we are not able to be successful still we are not able to feel happy about our own lives why is that because we are driven by their goals we are driven by their value systems and first to be able to feel motivated first to be able to reach that particular value, vision or goal for ourselves we must be able to find that value system and then that would always give us intrinsic motivation that would always give us that intrinsic motivation to be able to work on it so these are something that is very much important again planning plays a very important role you need to plan your day out you need to plan your uh, month or week or something like that so that you are always uh, keeping that in schedule that okay i have to do this right now i have to do this right now so that you are you have certain set in mindset you have certain set of mindset that okay i wish to complete this particular thing by the end of the day by the end of the month by the end of the week so that thing would always keep you in loop for that mm -hmm. so uh, having a time table understanding your value system understanding your vision would obviously help you to, a lot in working for that but again like you said that that the world we are living in right now is full of chaos i mean so many things happening right now in fact uh, uh, sushant case and in fact uh, covid 19 and so many shocking news coming all through the internet i think it's very much important first to be able to also identify some of the triggers that that might actually push us towards uh, being unproductive or push us towards uh, procrastinating so for example maybe shushant case is one such example whenever that happened let it would happen i think 2 3 months back but even after 2 3 months the case is still as bright as it was 2 3 months back and everyone is talking about it and for some people who might be fa facing anxiety who might be facing some sort of panic attacks related to that particular thing every time they listen to that word of shushan they would tend to listen to that particular news of that part they would have some panic attacks they would have some anxiety attacks mm. 
and that would definitely not allow them to work on their goals so if you have that high anxiety attacks if you have some high level of panic attacks it's important to understand your triggers and then try to dissociate yourself from it it's important to do that you might have to avoid that trigger you might have to avoid that word let's say for you surfing social media and you just come across the word sushant a lot of times and that time every time you do that that would trigger your mind that would trigger your mind into feeling panicky at that part so trying to understand that okay this is the word this is the panic word for me this is a trigger word for me understand that and try to block that content for yourself social media is not thing you cannot just block everything out but you can still block certain words you can still block certain keywords so that it doesn't come in front of you and then you can slowly and steadily you can be able to accept the situation because every time if it's keeping on pinging in your brain you wouldn't be able to accept whatever happened and then you would always have it in raised uh, fear and uh, fire inside of you that would not allow you to work on your goals so important for you to give yourself some time maybe take some time to grieve maybe say, take some time to uh, think about whatever happened accept the situation so that would allow you to actually deal with the situation in a much better way and then also allow you to focus and work on your goals i want to ask you how you actually disassociate yourself from these uh, these distractions basically because sometimes they just come in front of you and they just lure you into opening one more article about sushant mm-hmm. or opening one yeah. more uh, you know this YouTube video. I really enjoy some, some cricket yeah. video I watch or some random stuff I watch. So, but I think what you mentioned is that the first step is to accept that you are getting distracted by them, and once you right. accept it, you sort of uh, you know start to remove those distractions slowly out of your life. Maybe not unfollow those pages, or maybe just remove those you know keywords from your uh, search engines. Yeah. I don't. Know. Yeah. So right. I don't think that possible. Yeah. Right. right. i think yeah that's very important because for any particular habit it's very important to understand how a brain works uh-huh. because for any habit to be formed there always has to have some triggers yeah. and that trigger is followed by a routine and that is followed by reward so that trigger could be the word sushant for you and that is allowing you to get into the loop of uh, feeling miserable or feeling sad about your life so that is how you're stuck in that particular loop so the moment you start to avoid that trigger that habit won't be formed and then you'll be able to find some time to accept the situation because the day after this happened i mean we haven't got time to think about whatever happened things have been changing so many times there are so many news coming out there are so many theories coming out we haven't even got time to understand and accept whatever happened mm. and at that particular part it's important for you to take a break from those words from those keywords basically by blocking those things mm. and then take some time to accept the situation and then finally able to understand whatever happened and then being able to accept it in as a whole because you cannot definitely change that this is something that cannot be changed something that cannot be uh, worked upon so it's important first to be able to accept those things yeah i think uh, i from your words i remember that our older generations our grandmothers or parents they used to live so peacefully is because they did not have so much content thrown to them from all angles we have content right. thrown to us we are on tv we have a journalist shouting on social media <laughs> we have somebody fighting so right we are consuming so much content and we are not able to process each content and hum bas liye ja rahe hain ja rahe the idea is to uh, you know uh, choose the content you watch choose. be more mindful of the content you are watching i think watch more positive content that will really mm-hmm. help you uh, be more uh, you know be more positive throughout the day and focus on whatever you are doing and that look at the bright side yes also also so one more thing uh, so yes you have to focus on your goals but uh, right now most of us are working from home we are not going to mm-hmm. offices we do not have a routine as such so when you are working sitting on your bedroom uh, on your mm-hmm. couch that uh, laziness tends to come up i mean so it's been a while now and i'm sure people would be used to it but those who are not yeah. still i mean they feel lazy and they don't want to get up from their beds the routine has changed how do you uh, not procrastinate in while working from home or you know when your life has just shifted how do you just stay focused yes. and not get lazy and complacent to what you are doing right 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 i think uh, this is a very important part that we need to understand about procrastination is that whenever we are trying to procrastinate we are basically trying to avoid a certain feeling so basically trying to avoid what you want to feel at that particular part let's say you have examination tomorrow and you're trying to you're just procrastinating uh, trying to study for that examination so just try to ask yourself why are you procrastinating that and the moment you ask yourself that you get the answer that i don't want to feel that i haven't studied enough i don't want to feel that i i i, I haven't studied hard for examination 
So you're basically trying to avoid that feeling that I haven't studied enough. Because if you start feeling that, you would feel bad about your life, you'd feel sad about your life. And again, anxiety, panic, a lot of things could happen. So you're basically trying to avoid a feeling. So in any sort of procrastination, in any sort of uh, us delaying some certain, certain things in life, you're basically trying to avoid that feeling. The best way out to be able to work on that would be to understand what are you trying to avoid. Let's say you have to work on a certain project that, uh, that is really important for the company and the company is constantly pushing you towards starting that. But every time you are trying to start, you just, uh, you're just uh, dismayed by a lot of other things. You start surfing the internet, you start reading other things and you're basically delaying the part. So try to understand why you're trying to delay that thing. Maybe you are not very much accustomed with it. Maybe you are scared that you won't be able to do a good job at it. Maybe you are confused that uh, maybe this is a very new thing for me and I would not do uh, very good at it. So try to understand and accept that feeling and then work upon what you can do about it. So maybe you're not very good at it. Maybe it's something very new for you. Maybe it's something very fresh for you. So what is the way out of it? Try to read more about it. Try to do some research on it. Try to read certain more books about it. And the moment you do that, your fear, your doubt, and all, all that stress related to that uh, procrastination would go away because you feel much more confident about yourself. Yeah. The moment you start feeling confident about that, doing that particular task, that is the point you would start working on yourself or it's working on that project. Mm -hmm. So this would definitely help a lot in uh, uh, dealing with procrastination. Mm -hmm. But do you think it also aligns with your value system? I mean, whatever you're doing right now, if it does not align to your value system, there is a chance that you might procrastinate. You might not feel motivated enough to do it. But if it does yeah. align, you will wake up every day with the same enthusiasm, go and do that work. So I think Absolutely. it comes up to the point that realizing, understanding your values. And mm -hmm. also Absolutely. that Very important. Value, values, understanding your value system is another conversation in itself. But do you yes. want to give people some ideas? How do you really understand your values? Who you really mm -hmm. are? Then do you want to like tell, tell people that? Certainly, I think the best way out would be to, I think I would send you a link of my website and maybe you can attach in the video as well. Uh, there's a, a free web, a free ebook on my website that tells you to, that actually helps you to understand your value system. So basically there are a, there are a lot of value, values that are related to, and written on that particular sheet. You just have to find the values that actually relate to you. Maybe helping others, maybe being kind to others, maybe earning a lot of money, maybe feeling successful, feeling proud about yourself, a lot of values, a lot of words. You just have to relate and tick mark the things, tick mark the words that relate a lot to you. Mm -hmm. And the moment you start taking those things out, you would find it and okay, these are the things that actually push me a lot in working on my goals. So the moment you start doing that, you'll be able to identify those goals, identify those values, and then you'll be able to choose certain uh, uh, choices in your careers, in your life, even in your partners as well. And then you would be able to make the right decisions out of it. So yeah. that would definitely help.